So now that you've set up your page layout and you have your border with your title block all created, the next step is to add the drawing views. Now there's a really important step that we need to be aware of when we're using Inventor, and that's that the default way it will position the projected views. And the projected views are basically, let me just switch over here, and I'll show you what I mean. The projected views are the views that are projected from our base view. So the base view will be this one here, the elevation. The end elevation and then any other plans will be projected from that. And so what we need to make sure is that the projection method used in Inventor matches third angle projection, which is what we made the symbol here for to say. Uh, that's telling us that in this drawing we're using third angle projection. So it's actually relatively straightforward, but just by default it's got the wrong setting. So we need to go and change that. And we go up here to the top where it says uh, Tools. I think it's Tools anyway. No, I think it's Manage actually. And we've got Styles Editor. And then when that opens up, under this wee heading it says Standard, we want to click on where it says Default Standard. And then under the tab that says View Preferences, we want to click on there. And you'll see that we have an option to choose between third angle and first angle. And you'll see at the moment it's on the first angle. And that's basically where the views will appear the opposite way around. And hopefully you'll recognize that as the symbol that we created in our drawing. So if we click on third angle, uh, the only other thing we need to do is make sure to click save and close. And that will save that change. We're now ready to place some views. So if we go to the place views tab up here and we go to base view, if we already have the model open, it will usually just by default assume that that's what we want as our base view. Um, if we don't have the model already open or it doesn't find it by default, if you click on this little icon here for the file browser, you can go and search in your files and folders and so on to find the, the, the rocket model wherever you've saved it. And you will get this preview which appears. And that preview is showing us um, what this base view is going to look like, or at least which direction we're going to look at it from. Now this one is not quite the right way around because I want the door to be at the front. So I'm going to just go up to the view cube here and use this little arrow to reorient that. So I'm looking at it from this side of the view cube. So that flips it around and now we've got the door at the front, which is what I wanted. If we're happy with that, um, we can do a couple of other things before we create it. We can give it a label, so we can call it Elevation because that's the name of this. And we can tick the wee label visibility and that will make sure that that actually shows up. And we could also, you'll see that this box that's kind of appearing with the trace line beside it, we could actually create the other views like the end elevation and the plan and so on at the same time. But because I'd like to show you how you can add them later, I'm going to do that as a separate step. Finally, within here, there are a range of options which I'm not going to go into, but the one I do want to point out is this display option, the style. The hidden line is the one that we want to use, and that basically means that when we actually create the view, it will have hidden detail lines. These others allow us to choose to not have hidden detail lines or to show it rendered or shaded so it looks more realistic. But I'm happy with it on hidden, so I'm going to click OK. So I've now got my model. And you can see I've got some hidden detail lines showing us little details that are hidden behind that surface. And what I can do now is I can create some projected views. But I need to position it on the page first of all. So I'm going to think about where I want this to go and grab it just kind of around the edges, move it over to somewhere around about here. And that's going to give us space to add these other views onto the page. So after we've placed that in a position that we're kind of happy with, what we're going to do is we're going to just start by moving the we usually actually have the, the view label below the view. So we'll move that just down below it there. And if you want to change anything about how you've created that, you can double click on it and that will bring back this menu. And now we're going to add on our other views. So we're going to do projected view from here. So you see we go to the top here where it says projected view and it gives us a preview of the different projected, projected views that we can create. So we're going to create a projected view here and one here, and I'm also going to create one below here as well. Now at the moment it just shows us a placeholder for where those views are going to go. So I'm just going to create them. I'm sorry, somebody seems to be singing happy birthday in the background. Um, and now that we've created those, what we can do is add some other information, like for example dimensions and labels. So if we wanted to add labels, if we double click on them, we can give them a label, so this would be end elevation. You can make the view visible, or the, the label visible, should I say. We can maybe move that a little bit if we need to. 
So we just want to make sure that we position everything so we've got enough space around it. Um, and this one here, we're going to call this the plan. And we'll just, you can actually change whether that shows up automatically in the settings, but it doesn't take long to do it manually. So there we go, we've got our different views. We don't really need both plans, but it just gives us two places where we can put some of the, the extra dimensions. There's going to be another video following this, which is a kind of a drawing extension task, which will show us how to add other views, um, such as the section view here and a detail view but for now I'll leave that um, and we'll maybe come back to that if you've got some time you can do the extension task. The last thing I want to do before I add dimensions is create this rendered view though. Um, so if I go into here the last projected view I want to make so I've got it projected again I'm going to click that view and if I go diagonally up to the right it will kind of make an isometric view. You'll see we can choose which direction we want our isometric to come from. So I'm going to go up to the top right, I'm going to click that and create, so right click and create, create. And I'm going to go into this view here and I'm going to change it so that it's rendered or shaded. Okay, so that's what I want to do here. I want to make sure that that's a shaded view and I don't want any hidden lines. And what I might also do is I might try making it slightly bigger. So I'll just put a scale one to one, which would be life size. That might be a little bit too big. So I'll maybe do 1 to 1.5. Looks like it's probably, yeah, that's big enough to make it easier to see, but not so big we can't fit it on the page. So now we've got a rendered view over here, just showing us what the object looks like. So now that you've created your views, you're ready to move on to your dimensions, and that will be in the next video.